this halter offers me an opportunity to communicate with this horse if he doesn't listen to my body language. But if he listens to my body language and he's watching me, I won't have to use that halter. <laughs> okay, we're in part two. We're out on the heels of the video we just did. We just worked this horse loose. He's still loose. And I said I'm gonna get the halter and put on him to increase the efficiency of my time. And remember that this is a horse that, that had developed the uh, uh, ability to not be caught out in the pasture. And, and we're in a, a pretty, pretty decent sized room here. <laughs> it, it, if he doesn't want me to catch him, you know, it's, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but I can still, it's small enough that I can set it up to make being caught the easiest thing. Um, you know, there's one thing, you know, that for a horse to just come up to you and, and, and on their terms, stand there and, and, and kind of let you touch them a little bit. If that's all you have when it comes to catching a horse, as soon as you move to put the halter on, the horse going to turn and, turn and leave. So we need to have this horse <clears throat> mentally, willingly, offering themselves in a way that they just stand there and let us put the halter on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just approach straight on to that shoulder right now. I'm watching his eye. When he looks at me like that, I, I stopped just because that gave the horse some say in this matter. And when, I, when I stopped right there, it was the time for that horse to, it's okay. Let him, let him have a minute right there. Now, he's, now his feet are planted pretty good. He's ready for me to approach again. See, when I didn't stop that time, see how I got his feet moving? But I'm right here on the, on the balance point of that shoulder. So when he moved his feet, all I had to do was make a little adjustment to my left ahead of that shoulder to get him to stop. <clears throat> now I'm approaching just a little bit in front of that shoulder so that he feels my presence up here, you see? And I've also got to watch that he doesn't turn towards me and come back. But let me come up here, <clears throat> get my hands on him. I could have caught him right there, but <clears throat> for this uh, that I'm trying to accomplish here is get this horse in a state of mind where you don't have to go out and, and use so much strategy to, to catch him. He stood there. He let me come up and touch him. If I would have put the halter on at that moment, I feel like it would have been lying to the horse. He stood there, he let me come up, and then if I put the halter on, that would have been something that he didn't want me to do, so it would have taken away the benefit of standing there. So I gave him a, 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 a better choice, which was standing there. You see how that time there wasn't a hint of him trying to leave was because I didn't catch him the first time. So now, now that he's here, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my get my halter in position where I can just reach under and over his neck and grab that outside part and put put his nose right in there. Bring this over. Put that through the eye of the halter, around the eye, and back down. Okay. So what it looks like halter and lead rope on here is simply a way for me to uh, to increase the efficiency of my time working for the we're working with this horse this halter offers me the ability to have an outside boundary this horse this halter offers me an opportunity to communicate with this horse if he doesn't listen to my body language but if he listens to my body language and he's watching me, I won't have to use that halter, <laughs> okay? So he's in a pretty good frame of mind right there, 
But you remember how he was hiding out in uh, quietness? So I'm going to shorten my lead rope up here to about this length, maybe just even a little bit shorter. And see him come up and brace. He said, I, I'm, I'm not ready. You know, all he did was come up against the halter. And in his mind, he is, he's backing away from here, getting out of, out of work by positioning himself behind them shoulders in that defensive position up against the halter. He's saying, I don't want any part of what you have to offer right now. So that's not an acceptable, that's not an acceptable attitude. That's not an acceptable posture. That's a dash light indicator that this horse just told me I'm not ready to get on yet. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to ask him to come forward here. Watch the slack in, in this, this rope right here. I've told him to come forward. And he said, no, I'm not coming forward. So now I need, I need some forward motion. There. When I said there, if you notice there was slack put in that rope. Now who put slack in that rope? Was it me or him? See the kink in his tail? See him going up against that outside boundary? He's tighter than a banjo string. He would dang sure buck you off if you got on him right now. Step up there and, and now when he's stepping forward, you see that left hind reaching up towards the right front, working in that diagonal. He's letting me move around up here a little bit. Still too reactive, too reactive. So this, this set the stage up here and take, get us a turn on the forehand. Get things working here a little better. He, he backed up and got out of the picture. He's in the picture right now. His tail's still kinked. He's still too tight. He's still doing more than I'm asking him to do. But I'm just staying here with steady rhythmic energy. Steady rhythmic energy. What am I looking for? I'm looking for this horse to soften that hind leg, to soften, come forward softly with a good attitude and not overreact when I raise my hand up here. Not overreact. Okay? All right, let's go the other direction. So I want him to come back through here. Step in there, see he's tight, he's trying to get away. Horse is telling me he's not ready to ride because of his actions right here. I'm gonna step up into that shoulder. He's running off right now with his back feet. <clears throat> just running off. And by that, I mean, he's just escaping. He's not listening. He's not, see him grab himself, he's tight. <clears throat> I'm just holding him, holding him to a constant I'm not physically holding him, but I'm staying right there with a the steady rhythmic energy. And he's just up trying to get away, trying to get away, trying to get away, being all emotional and dramatic about it. <clears throat> so what? The time frame's not mine. The time frame is his. I don't, his behavior that he's exhibiting is telling me I'm not ready to get on. So. If he's going to get tight and be emotional, how do you get through emotion? He's got to express that emotion. They express their emotion out through their feet. When he can move his feet and he can just start to get comfortable with his feet moving, then we replace irrational emotion with logical thought. Then we get a horse that is ready. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? I'm, I'm safe, but we're not there yet. So, he's already. Let's use this rope as, a, as another tool to help here. He can hear that rope whizzing. 
but that rope is not touching him, see? But you see this kink in his tail? He's tight, he's up against the outside boundary. He can accept this, but he hasn't accepted it. This rope is gonna come up and lay on the saddle, get there on his rump, and we're gonna keep it right there, and keep him going around. So I'm desensitizing him while his feet are moving. And come on, man, get around there. You want to get happy, get happy. Get in the way, ain't he? You're running off. Get in the way. Something's got him. Something's got him. Don't matter. There, look at that change, see? When that change happened, then I softened way up. It doesn't mean I got to take that thing off. That just means I softened up. If he, see him looking over his right shoulder? What does that mean? He's feeling that rope around that, on that right shoulder. Very good. So just let him, just let him just accept that. Let him have that. By letting him have that, I mean, he found a way underneath that pressure to get quiet mentally. This lead rope, <clears throat> it's a fine lead rope, very good quality, but it's, to me, it's about two foot too long. <laughs> it just gets in my way. So that's reason I've got to wad it up like this and, and try to handle it. Uh, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with having him out further away, but if I was further away from him, I'd, it'd be just like if he was loose, you see. Then the efficiency of my time goes way down. You know, I don't want to have to spend all day getting the horse ready ready to go. And hopefully we're, we'll be setting up the stage where it will require less and less of this as this horse's respect level comes up as it needs to be. I'm just letting him have a minute to air up. See, he didn't really want me to get on this side. That's okay. Let's see if we can get this rope. And when he heard that, that rope whiz in there a little bit, he decided to leave. He got tight, he humped his back up, got tight in his body. He's not pulling on the lead rope, but he's, he's, he's sure not with me right now. And I'm just moving this rope around. You see, I'm getting it to where... See that change? And he got, he, he quit being tight. He softened up, he tucked his nose and he walked forward with a, with a nice feel, a nice soft feel. And this is the first indication this horse has told me since I worked on him that I might be ready to start for you to ride. Okay. <clears throat> so the promise I make to a horse is, is when, when you give me signals of agreement, that gets you out of work. <laughs> so that's when I'm standing here doing nothing right now. And I believe that this horse is about to approach a, no, that, see, nothing happened there. He didn't need to grab himself. We didn't, that chicken little stuff there, this guy's falling on his part. Nothing is wrong, but he act like something's wrong. Well, <clears throat> Whenever the quitting happens, that's what leaves a lasting impression. I bet you when he, when he got you bucked off, he did that. Somehow or another, you managed to stay on. What, when you're trying to stay on, you're squeezing and grabbing and carrying on, if you're like me anyway. <laughs> you're just doing whatever you can do to, to stay on them things. And then all of a sudden, centrifugal force takes off and bang there you go darting off out there in the, on the ground hopefully you got a soft place to land but don't look for that soft place to land because if you're looking for a soft place to land you're going to get bucked off every time you get on the horse try to ride that horse try to stay on that horse but anyway he jumped like this you jump like that next thing you know he jumped again next thing you know there you're on the ground and guess what happened you quit doing what you were doing at that exact moment 
<clears throat> well, it's in the quitting at that moment that trained this horse to have this response. <laughs> So if we don't expose him to that response, it's going to be there every time you get on. <clears throat> One time I've been on a horse that's got me or somebody else bucked off. That horse will be looking over that shoulder, whichever side you came off, for that opportunity to come again for, for some time. So, so we've, got to, we've got to smooth out the... We've got to put him back in the oven, heat the, heat the elements up again, Rebake the cake, so to speak. <clears throat> okay, now then, we've been working on the hind end. I'm going to take this lead rope and have a conversation with him. I'm going to get rid of this rope and have a conversation with him and see how he's going to respond with some elements to the front end and see where we're at. So, what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> is watch this horse. And when he's doing what I want, I'm going to let him be. That's what I wanted, the front end going that way. So now I've decided I want him to turn away from me. So I'll toss that rope over his head he accepted that real nicely. Then I'll have him turn away from me, bring him on through, bring him on through, keep going through, throw that lead rope over his head again, take him on through. This time I want him to come on around me. Now I'm going to take his hip away. Now I'm going to bring him through. Now I'm going to toss that rope over his head. Now I'm going to get that rope coming down through there. Now let's go the other way. We'll toss it over this way. Toss it back around that way. Let's get his hip completely out of the way. Let's bring his front end through. Let's get that lead rope over his neck. Around this way. Let's bring his hip away. Bring the front end through. Let's go forward right here. Let's move that hip out of the way. Let's bring this horse up here. Let's have the whole horse go sideways. Let's change direction and have the same thing take place. Let's go sideways here. See that freedom that came right there? I brought the energy up until he said, I, I can get away from there. But he wasn't running away. See, as soon as I stopped, he stopped. <clears throat> Go sideways here. Hips locked. Hips locked. Move your hip. There it is. Now, turn between me and your hip. Let's go all the way around. I missed his head. That's just an opportunity for desensitizing. Send him forward. Let's pick up a little more effort. He got a kink in his tail. Says I'm not ready to ride. And I've let him out and had him let him have a little more room. Let's see how he's gonna be when he gets out there just a little bit. This gets stopped. Let's back up. Just send on. Let's get around there. Yeah, he can hit a nice, nice slope. Let's get stopped. Let's go forward. <clears throat> Let's move that hip out of the way. Let's move that front end. Let's go all the way around with the front end. Let's go straight. Let's go straight. Let's turn to the right. Let's go straight. Let's turn to the left. Turn to the left. He's pushing on me with his hip. Pushing on me with his hip. Let's turn to the left. Step, now he's off. Now he's right on. Let's go straight. Let's go straight.
Now, that's what I call having a conversation with him. Everything I ask him to do is like a word in horse language. When I saw that he understood that word, I put a little separation between that and the next word, and then I waited until I saw him understand that word, and then next thing you know, I started stringing words that he understood into a sentence, <laughs> and then I can put that sentence into a paragraph, and we can have a real conversation with a horse that he understands, and look what happened to his attitude. He quit trying to make decisions. He decided that listening to me was his best way to peace, <laughs> And when he, when he got in this frame of mind, things I think are, are in real good shape right there. So in my opinion, he looks, he looks like he's ready to ride now.